welcome to the Environmental Learning Center at Clackamas Community College. I'm Maggie, an educator here at the ELC, and this is technically week two of our Wildlife in the Watershed live stream series, where each week we are learning about a different animal that calls the wetland their home. Last time we learned about our friend the mallard, uh, which you may be seeing more of behind me throughout today's live stream. I actually just took a walk around the ELC this morning and I saw dozens of mallards pairing up. So it looks like a lot of the male and the female mallards uh, have been swimming together and hanging out a lot. And that is a really good sign that spring is on its way and that we'll probably be getting a lot of baby ducklings in the spring, which is very exciting. Uh, but this week we are talking about our friend, the beaver. Now I've got this uh, beaver mount here. Um, on the table. He's very old and so I believe his fur has been bleached uh, by the sun from sitting in our window for decades probably. Uh, but beavers tend to be actually a really dark brown color. Uh, but we can still see all types of really cool things um, on this beaver. Beavers are the largest rodent in North America. They have the really iconic big buck teeth and that big flat tail and are known for building dams out of sticks and mud and rocks that completely change the landscape of where they're living. So I'm very excited to be talking about them today. In order to better get to know these guys, we are going to be some beaver detectives. We are going to take a closer look at this guy. We're going to see some beavers in action building their dams. And also we might be able to test out the dam that I have built here today. So very exciting stuff. Uh, the ELC here is a wetland, and a wetland is an area of land that is covered in water. Um, and all types of animals find food, water, and shelter here um, in wetlands like the ELC. And the coolest thing I think about beavers is the fact that they can actually create wetlands. So they'll come into an area that's, you know, dry land, but maybe just has a tiny little creek in it, and they'll put this dam which is like a, a wall of sticks and mud um, and it will stop the um, water from flowing downstream and it will create a really more stagnant um, like wetland area um, and tons of animals benefit from it um, so i'm very excited to be talking to you about them today a couple of things before we get started, I'd like to introduce, once again, Michelle as our camera person. So if I mentioned her, that's who I'm speaking to. Um, and she's also the one monitoring the Zoom chat. So if you have any questions uh, throughout today's live stream about beavers, uh, you can go ahead and put them in the Zoom chat, and I will make sure to save time to answer them at the end. Um, you should also hopefully have a activity sheet in front of you. Um, so we have... Uh, this week's is titled Beavers, Nature's Builders, and hopefully by the end of today's live stream, you will be able to uh, know how to draw a beaver dam and how that dam is going to create a beaver pond behind it, and all about different animals that benefit from a beaver pond. Um, so throughout today's live stream, I'm going to be mentioning a couple different animals uh, that find food or shelter at beaver ponds. So make sure to keep an eye out for that so that you can draw them and write about them on today's activity sheet. Alrighty, let's get started. So beavers don't currently live here at the ELC, um, and they haven't reportedly been spotted. But we do know that they've been here before. How do we know? Well by seeing the things that beavers leave behind. So a couple of years ago, a stick was found on the side of the ELC trail. And I actually have the stick with me right now. And on this stick, there are all types of little rectangular-esque, I suppose, markings. So you can see there's areas of a stick where the bark has been removed, um, and there's all these little uh, teeth marks. And so when we found this, uh, we were able to think about um, what animal has teeth of that shape, what animal eats bark, um, and the answer is beavers. Beavers love to eat bark, um, like the outer bark of trees, and they also love um, aquatic plants and leaves as well. It was super cool to find this because it shows that a beaver uh, has stopped along here um, and stop for a quick snack, which is super fun. So um, let's take a closer look at the adaptations that beavers have. 
uh, that allows them to make those markings and to build their homes. So right here, we've got a beaver, um, and they have something really cool about their ears and their nose. Have you ever gotten water stuck in your ear before? Oh my gosh, it's so annoying. Have you ever gotten water up your nose while swimming? Oh, oh it's horrible. But beavers don't have to worry about that because they actually have valves. Um, so things that they can shut off in their ears and in their nose that prevents water from getting in. It's super cool. They also have a necessitating membrane, which is just a fancy word for a clear eyelid that they can put over their eyes so they can still see, uh, but water doesn't get in. So they basically have built-in swimmers goggles, which is so cool. They also have these big back feet. Um, which are webbed very similarly to the mallards that we talked about last time. Um, the webbing allows for them to swim better in the water, just like how a pair of swimming flippers helps us. Their front feet look different than their back feet, just like how our hands look different than our feet, uh, because their hands uh, are really, it's really important that they're agile um, and, and able to pick up sticks and rocks and mud uh, because they are moving all the time. Beavers also have a very big flat tail, and I'm actually going to show you, I have another beaver here um, that can show off the tail a little bit better. It's a little damaged, but it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, it's this furless big flat tail uh, that they can slap on the ground or on the surface of the water, and it makes this really loud snap or slap sound. Um, in order to warn other beavers that there's a predator nearby. They also um, work as sort of a kickstand to help them keep their balance when they're cutting down trees. Um, it also works as a rudder in the water, similar to a rudder on a boat. So it helps them uh, navigate themselves through the water better. And it also helps with thermal regulation. So because the tail doesn't have any fur on it, uh, heat can escape from it a lot easier than the rest of their body. So when it's really hot outside, the tail actually helps them not overheat. So super cool stuff. I uh, love the unique beaver tail. So all those things I listed off are physical adaptations of the beaver. So it's things about their body that helps them do what they do and live where they live. Um, so I want to go ahead and show you guys a beaver's home, and then we'll get into exactly how the beaver builds that home. All right, let's take a look. So on the screen here, I've got on the left a beaver dam, which is that wall of sticks and rocks and mud that beavers build in order to stop creeks or rivers from flowing as fast, and it ends up creating a pond behind it. And then a beaver lodge on the right looks like just a big pile of sticks, but actually it's the beaver's home. So that pile of sticks is hollow on the inside, and that's where beaver families live. Let's take a look at that from a different angle. So as you can see, again, on the left, there's a beaver dam, and then on the right, there's a beaver lodge. And thanks to the deep water that the beaver dam creates, they can actually uh, build an underwater tunnel entrance into their home, which is so cool. Um, and it prevents other animals or predators from getting in. So a beaver family lives in these lodges, typically, you know, the two parents and then all of their kids. Um, and they raise their young, the babies stay in the lodge for the first year of life. Uh, they also store a lot of their food in there for the winter, and they also sleep in there. Um, so it's, it's a really nice, cozy, safe place for the beavers to live, and it's so cool that they're able to build that. Here's a photo of a beaver dam in Portland, close to Reed College, uh, that I visited. So there's all of these sticks, um, as you can see, of various different sizes, holding back a lot of this water. Uh, and so that is an example of a nice local beaver dam that we have. Here's another photo that's a really clear image. You can see that big pile of branches in the back is the beaver lodge, and the wall of branches in front is the beaver dam. And here's another one as well. This dam actually has a little bit of a leak in it, uh, which is quite common. Beavers will either let that leak kind of do its thing because it actually might prevent the dam from, um, you know, being uh, destroyed by too much water, uh, but a lot of times the beavers will notice the leak and they'll actually come with more sticks and mud and patch it up 
So they're constantly maintaining their dams so that their home uh, has that nice deep pond that they love. So beavers create these ponds that have all this deep water um, and lots of shady stick filled areas. There's just something that insects love. So there's a great increase of insects and where there's insects, the fish show up because they love to eat those insects. And then all types of animals that love to eat fish show up as well. So we've got great blue herons, kingfishers, those are all different types of birds that love to eat fish. Uh, so they show up. You can see we've got um, a couple of turtles uh, that love to eat snails and plants and all types of things. Um, and they also love to relax on the logs in the pond. Our friend the mallard, of course, loves to live in ponds and lakes. Um, so you can see there's a couple of mallards in the back. So there's all types of cool animals, uh, fish and other um, salamanders love to lay their eggs in the water. Um, so beavers really transform an area from just a little creek into a beautiful home for all types of animals. Um, but I want to show you a quick video um, of beavers live in action um, building their dams uh, because it's a really cool process. Beavers are actually typically nocturnal, so they're not out during the day very often. Um, and so being able to see them actually at work doing their thing is really cool. Uh, and I really want to share it with you. So beavers are herbivores, meaning they only eat plants. So like I said before, they like to eat um, bark as well as the leaves of trees um, and aquatic plants. They do not eat the inner wood of a tree. All of that inner wood is what they use to build their homes. So as we will see here, there's some beavers ripping bark off of a tree, having a good snack, and then another beaver chomping down that inner wood that they don't eat, but they're just chipping away so that they can cut the tree down. So as um, their teeth continuously grow um, at six millimeters per day. Uh, and so they have to constantly wear them down by nine. Um, and uh, yeah, they allow the wind to help them knock those huge trees down. Uh, and then they continue to uh, take the branches off of them. Um, you can see this guy's just chomping right through it like it's nothing, which is pretty wild. Um, and then they drag it over to their beaver dams. Um, they spend a lot of time underwater. They can hold their breath um, underwater for up to 15 minutes, which is pretty wild. As you can see, they're putting rocks down. They like to put rocks down as like a, a main base layer. It's a good foundation and then add the sticks and mud on top. Um, so yeah, all types of cool stuff. Already. Now that we've seen these guys hard at work building their dams, building their lodges, um, and uh, we've seen how those dams create habitat for other animals, I want to go ahead and test out to see if I can build a dam as well as a beaver can. So what I did was I filled a tray up with clay and sticks and rocks, just like a beaver would in this tiny little tray. I highly recommend trying out this activity um, at home if you get the chance. Uh, but I tried my best to fill it up with as many sticks and uh, I just used some clay to represent the mud. Um, and let's see if it can hold back water like a beaver dam can. Um, last time I tried this, it did not succeed. So I'm clearly not as talented as a beaver at this. But let's go ahead. Uh, okay, it looks like it held it back a little bit, uh, but there's still definitely leaks in my dam. So, all right. But yeah, like I said before, all types of animals really benefit. Um, from the beaver's wetland, but um, plenty of people will also benefit from beavers as well. So the fact that they create wetlands um, helps uh, the water be filtered, slowed down, and cooled down, which leads to healthier water for us and the animals as well. Um, beavers are actually known for helping uh, prevent 
wildfires from spreading as well, which is super, super interesting because wetlands, when they're covered in water, are less likely to light on fire. So there's all types of cool things about viewers. I could keep going on forever, uh, but I wanted to uh, spend a little bit of time answering your guys' questions. So uh, do we have any questions in the chat about viewers? Okay, go ahead and type in the chat. We have just a couple minutes. One question that I had about beavers was, um, what's the longest or biggest beaver dam? Because they they're all they come in all types of shapes and sizes. Um, some of them are only like thirty, or not only, but yeah, thirty feet wide. Um, while the world's largest beaver dam ever recorded is eight football fields wide. I can't even comprehend how big that is and how many beavers it takes for them to keep that up. Um, but super, super cool. Okay, what is the average lifespan? Okay, we got our first question. What is the average lifespan of a beaver? Great question. It is 10 to 12 years. What kind of wood do they love to build with? Next question, what kind of wood do they love to build with? That's a really great question. There are specific trees that they prefer, specifically, I think, aspen and cottonwood um, and others. I think, uh, I'm not sure if it makes a better building material or if they just like the taste of the bark. So you might as well, you know, have a little snack and then use the rest of it to build. Uh, okay. But great question. Two more questions. Are beavers mean and how much do they weigh? Great <laughs> question. Someone asked, are beavers mean? And that's actually a really good question. Uh, they can bite people and they have, they can, um, I've, I've heard of people being bitten by beavers. So if you ever see one in person, uh, please don't try to pet it. Please don't approach it. Make sure that you're really nice and respectful and observe them from a distance uh, because they do want to protect themselves and their dam. So I don't um, know. Uh, so Two quick questions. How, how much do they weigh and how do you know if it's male or female? Oh, good question. So uh, someone asked how much do beavers weigh? Um, and they weigh typically 35 to 65 pounds. But I did find that the heaviest beaver on record was 110 pounds, which is heavier than you know, a lot of people, so that's a very, very big beaver. Um, as for telling uh, between male and females, I'm not sure if from the distance that we see them that we would be able to tell the difference. I I actually don't know. One more question, Gabriel, but when would, okay. you most like, uh, when would you most likely see a beaver and what state? Okay, great question. So just one last question because we're all running out of time, but someone asked um, where, when are you most likely to see a beaver and in what state? Uh, so beavers are actually present all across um, Canada, North America, and northern Mexico. Uh, so you can probably see them everywhere. Oregon is known as the beaver state um, because we did have a lot of beavers at one point. Uh, so you probably are likely to see one here. I know plenty of natural areas that have dams in them. Uh, that you can totally visit. Uh, so I would definitely look that up and check them out. Um, but as for the best time to see them, I would say in the evening. So as the sun is setting, um, because they do spend a lot, they are mostly nocturnal, um, it's kind of unlikely for you to see them during the day. So visit one of those dams in the evening and you'll probably be able to see uh, some viewers. So thank you so much for your amazing questions. Those are all so great. Uh, I hope that you'll join us next week to learn about raccoons, another one of my favorite animals. Uh, but until then, take care, get outside and respect all those who live there. Until next time, bye.